Hey, Chandler Bolt here, and joining me today is my good friend, John Lee Dumas, aka JLD. He's the host of the Entrepreneurs on, Fi uh, on Fire podcast. Uh, just, I mean, you've probably heard of this podcast. It's one of the biggest podcasts ever with millions, maybe even, I feel like I saw a status like 100 million downloads or something crazy the other day. Uh, he's also the author of the soon to be published book, The Common Path to Uncommon Success. You may remember episode 33 way back. Uh, he was on the podcast. We talked about his book, Podcast Launch, uh, and how he's used that book to grow his, uh, his business. Um, it just has been a huge part of that. So uh, today we're going to be talking about his upcoming book launch, what he's doing differently. We might even get it to talk a little bit about journals and planners. He sold a lot of them. <laughs> uh, so we can talk about that and a lot more good stuff. So JLD, welcome. Great to have you. Chandler, always great to be sharing the mic with you. I mean, you know, there's not that many people that can match my level of energy and vibe. So uh, you're definitely one of those. So it's always a fun conversation and looking forward to diving on in. So, hey, let's start with, you know, the common, uh, the common path to uncommon success, releasing end of March, your newest book. I think, well, we'll get into that in a little bit, but why write this book and how does it fit in with your goals from a business perspective? Listen, I couldn't write this book in 2012. I was clueless. I hadn't had any success in business or entrepreneurship. In 2016, I was still like, you know, I got a long ways to go. But here we are, a decade into my business. I've interviewed 3,000 successful entrepreneurs, over 100 million listens, as you mentioned, 1.4 million listens every single month. And oh, by the way, I've been running my media empire here that's been generating multiple millions of dollars of net profits. And since unlike Chandler, I live in Puerto Rico, I get to keep all that money that I make, which is fantastic as well. And it's been quite a journey. And so what I knew I finally had to do was write the culmination of the thousands and thousands of hours that I've spent speaking and talking and learning from, because I've been the mentee to the 3,000 interviews that I've done with the world's most successful entrepreneurs. They have been my mentor. And I took all of this knowledge, all these conversations that you know was rattling around in my brain and on all of my show notes pages and all these different things, and I boiled down what turned out to be the 17 foundational principles that, frankly, every single successful entrepreneur possesses. And I looked down, I arranged them chronologically. I'm like, okay, this is the order that you go in. And I'm like, this is a roadmap. This is a 17 step roadmap to financial freedom and fulfillment. That's what we've achieved. Myself, Kate, my business. That's what these 3000 entrepreneurs that I've interviewed have achieved financial freedom and fulfillment. And here was a 17 step roadmap in front of me. And I was just like, man, if I had Chandler Bolt standing over my shoulder right now, he'd be like, that's a book. That's a 17 chapter book. And that's exactly what I did. I spent all of 2020, my quarantine time, writing for two hours a day. I ended up writing 480 hours. It took me to write 71,000 words, 273 pages of the common path to uncommon success. And it is just that. It's the 17 step roadmap that I boiled down. I knew had to be 17 chapters step by step. And man, I am fired up for this puppy to be released to the world. Man, what a feeling. So from, from a business perspective, why, why a book? Why this book? Why spend 480 hours writing this thing? Like, how does it fit in your, with your goals business-wise? Books are amazing. I mean, I know I'm preaching to the choir with yourself and with your viewers and listeners right now, but books are amazing. Books are a way that you can kind of have a cheat code. You know, you press a fast forward button and all of a sudden you're literally getting the 10 best years of my life that I spent interviewing thousands and thousands of entrepreneurs for thousands and thousands of hours. Don't go listen to all those episodes right now if you haven't yet. If you have, you're awesome. If you haven't yet, this book, it's the cheat code. It's the 17 boiled down, all the fat is cut out right there for you. And that's why I've always loved books. Like books got me going on my journey, reading books, listening to the audio books, like consuming the right content, you know, being able, you know, in a handful of hours to get decades and decades and sometimes centuries of knowledge. Like it's insane. And that's what I want. Like this is 
the book that I had to write because I get hundreds of questions a day, Chandler, from my audience, really with just variations of about 10 questions. They're all basically the same 10 questions. Like I won't go through the questions now, but they're essentially asking me the same 10 questions. And I can't just answer every question individually. I can't, I don't have the time to do it. Nobody does. But now I can say, this is your answer. And if you're willing to invest in yourself, this is the answer you're looking for. Take it. And I'm not take, talking about investing money. It's $16. I'm talking about investing your time in reading this book and applying its principles. That's it. So that's why I wrote this book, Chandler. That's why the book was the right move for me because it's how people need to consume this content. This is my version of my legacy at this point in my life. Nice. We, we always talk about what are the broken record conversations that you're having with uh, prospects and customers? And the best book is the thing that you're tar- tired of talking about. Uh, and, and if you're tired of talking about it, you write the book on it and exactly what you said, you just keep pointing to that book. And it's a way to serve more people at, while also not having to answer all those questions. So John, you, uh, I think you traditionally published this book. I think Harper Collins, if, if I'm remembering correctly, what was the decision there? Obviously, um, you self-published podcast launch, and then you've got um, the the different journals that I, I think are all self-published and you guys keep it yep. in-house and fulfill and all that. What was the thought process behind traditionally publishing this, uh, this book? Why'd you do it? And what was that process of getting a deal like? I think one of the biggest mistakes entrepreneurs make is they find their comfort zone. They work really, really hard. And they, they're out of their comfort zone. They're trying new things. They're scared. And then they get into their comfort zone as an entrepreneur, and then they stay there. And they forgot that the reason why they got success in the first place is because they were outside of their comfort zone. Well, listen, we self-published three books. I mean, I self-published the podcast journal, How to Create and Launch Your Podcast. I self-published the Mastery Journal, How to Master Productivity, Discipline, and Focus. I self-published the Freedom Journal, How to Accomplish Your Number One Goal in 100 Days that's my comfort zone. I know that. I know like that it's going to be successful at a certain level. We've crushed it with all three of these journals. We know the process. It's in our comfort zone. It's time to get out of my comfort zone. That was my attitude with this book. And I got an email from an agent at the right time. And she said, John, I know you have a book in you. I've represented friends of yours like Hal Elrod and other great authors. Um, I can get you in front of all the big five publishers with your book idea, whatever that might be. Let's do this. And we got on a call. Her name's Celeste Fine. She's amazing. And we did just that. We hashed out what the book idea was going to be. She took me through the process of scheduling the appointments with the big five publishers. You know, it was a very interesting process. You know, I mean, I've ne- I'm have i a first time author, like traditionally published author. You know, I had journals I had self-published, but I'd never, you know, actually r- like written a book. I mean, I know we talked about podcast launch, but I mean, listen, I'm not trying to downplay that book. It's, it's a great book, but I, I wrote it in one weekend. It's, you know, five, se- 7,000 words and it, it serves its purpose. You know, it, it serves its purpose to lead people into my podcasters paradise community. And, and it's a valuable book, but nothing like this. I mean, this is 71,000 words, 273 pages. Um, but at the time, who knew, who knew what it was going to be? But we were pitching ideas to Harper Collins, and she was like setting my expectations. She's like, and not just Harper, by the way, all the big five. And she's like, you know, it's really hard for anybody to get, you know, much more than like a, you know, a low five figure um, offer, best case scenario for an advance. And I was like, well, that's fine. Like, I don't really need a big advance. Like, my business is, is, is creating a lot of revenue. We're fine there, but let's see what happens. I more wanted to go with traditional publisher because I, I I feel like I needed the editor, the publisher, the marketing team. I wanted to just kind of like to see what it was like to work with people who did this professionally for a long time. I was curious about that process. Well, the uh, interviews went great. The bidding war started. And at the end of the day, Chandler, not to uh, to, to skip to the end too quickly, but, you know, we accepted a $350,000 advance from HarperCollins, you know, as a first time author, which we were pretty pretty fired up about for obvious reasons. And uh, then I set off to write the book. Anything you learned from that process that would be helpful for folks who are looking to, to maximize their advance, like any strategic moves that you guys did or ways that you got such a big advance? One of the, the best things that we did, and I think this is a really key takeaway that, that should be very helpful. You do have to find a book that the big five are going to be like, oh, I know that book. And that book did fantastic. 
um, that you can say, hey, my book is going to be, you know, the the Uber of this. You know how a lot of people like to say, my company is going to be the Uber of fill in the blank. And we did that in the specific manner of saying, hey, my, my, my book is going to be the business book version of the hero's journey. Like, and, and the publishers knew that book. They knew that it was a great book by Joseph Campbell. Um, they, you know, it, it stood the test of time. It was a legacy. And we were doing that as we were telling them in the business section, like for entrepreneurs. So this is going to be, you know, the hero's journey for entrepreneurs. And because that they could click with that and connect with that concept, it got them a lot more excited about the idea. And so that was really key for us because, you know, you can have like the best title in the world, the best tagline in the world, even like the best idea in the world, but people want to say, okay, like, you know, this is going to be the Uber of, you know, fast food or fill in the blank. That's what they want. And so this is going to be the hero's journey for entrepreneurs. Like that really connected the dots for people quickly. That's great. And super, super smart. I want to talk marketing and and I want to go back and then, and then kind of work our way forward to this, this book and what you're doing differently, what you've learned and things like that. But for starters, I want to go back just briefly because it's had a lot more success since we last talked as well. And then you held up for those watching um, the, the YouTube video version, you held up that fancy new looking cover for podcast launch. You, you kind of downplayed it. 7,000 uh, words, you know, it's, it's a practical guide. It's used to grow your business, but that thing has 816 reviews on Amazon right now. How'd you do that? So we did that one by one. And I really mean that like one by one by one, I'll have people that'll just email me a casual thing. Like, Hey John, like I'm in podcasters paradise. Like I fa- first found out about you, you know, reading podcast launch on Amazon. And I'll respond back, you know, I have a text expander, so I'm only just typing like three letters like TTT and it expands out. Oh, thank you so much for your kind words about podcast launch. By the way, did you leave a review for it if you really enjoyed it? Because if you did, um, that means the world to me. Thank you. If you didn't, reviews mean everything. So it would be so meaningful if you click the link below and just copy and paste exactly what you've already said about it in the review. And that would be fantastic. And in fact, if you do, hit a reply, we've got something special for you. And literally, we did it one review at a time because it is so hard to get reviews for anything in this world, especially books, even if people love it because you know it's not the easiest thing to do. You've got to do it one by one by one. Yeah, that's great. And such a, such a practical tip. <laughs> Any author, who are always telling people, scrap for every single review. Um, because every review matters. And that's that's the cool thing about learning how to maximize a platform is that you learn how to do this with iTunes and Amazon is another platform and ecosystem just like iTunes. So you knew that that probably, I'm sure from years of doing that same exact thing for on the iTunes side of things and it carries over to this platform. What do you, what do you give them? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's always changed over the years. You know, yeah. one time we actually did ship them a journal, like literally like our Freedom Journal or our mastery journal, nice, you know, nice. especially if they lived in the US, like we would ship it to them. Um, so we always made it really valuable. That's awesome. Hey, let's talk, you know, we're working our way back to um, the, the book coming up. Let's talk some, some of the journals. Obviously you've got, I think it's what the mastery journal, you've got the freedom journal, you've got the hundred day goal journal or financial journal. Why journals? And then I feel like you were one of the early people. I mean, I feel like now we're seeing journals, planners. Yeah, I started it. You were were one of the early ones to do that and productize that. So why did you launch? I think it was the Freedom Journal first. That was first. Yeah, back in 2015. It was actually about middle of 2015. um, I started asking my audience the question that I tell everybody to ask their audience. What's your biggest struggle right now? And the thing that came back back then was, John, how do you accomplish goals? How do you set goals? What is a goal? What does that look like? And I was like, let me create the solution to this problem. And I sat down and kind of mapped out what that would look like. And at the end of me mapping it out, it looked like a physical journal. Like I knew that's what it had to be for various reasons. And, you know, I got in touch with the right people and and made it happen. And listen, kind of the secret uh, amazing thing about a journal is that you kind of you know, create two or three pages and then just repeat them a hundred times. <laughs> journal. Yeah. 
Um, but you know, at the same time, those pages are going to be great. Otherwise, you know, it's crap, but, um, you know, a little different than having to write 71,000 words. <laughs> let me tell you, because I've had experience in both. Yeah. So that was a process and the same thing a year later with the mastery journal, um, and the freedom journal, we launched it, you know, to our audience on Kickstarter and we did $453,000 in 33 days. Um, a year later, we did three hundred thousand dollars in thirty-three days with the Mastery Journal. Um, so we've just always been really good at asking our audience what they want, what they need, and then handing it to them. And so, right out of the gate, you had pre-sales, which I would imagine funded the creation of both of those. If you, do you have a ballpark on how many copies of these these journals that you've sold, and and what's moved the most copies over the years? Because I feel like this has been a huge part of your business. Hundreds of thousands of copies have been sold over the years. And, you know, this isn't, you know, like a $2.99, you know, Kindle, you know, book. Like this is a $39 physical journal that, you know, people are literally having to make a financial decision on. I mean, 40 bucks isn't nothing. You know, that's that's a real monetary investment, uh, period. Um, I mean, I think twice about 40 bucks, you know, spending things on, on you know, whatever. So, that was the process, you know, it was just like, what is the major solution that we need to provide to our audience? How can we do that in a meaningful manner? Then how do we start moving these books? And I'll tell you, Amazon has been the main driver. As much as I love our Shopify store and it's great, um, our, you know, <laughs> we just sell a fraction of, of the journals on the Shopify store that we do on Amazon. Amazon's just this perpetual marketing machine. So somebody buys X, you know, the next page that comes up is, hey, customers that bought X also buy these things. And so it starts, you know, you start getting promoted with all these other products and services. And it just is like this kind of snowball effect of awesome. And then before you know it, like you're literally doing, you know, like we, we'll do a hundred, hundred journal sales a day during the holiday season. Sometimes like it's crazy. And are you, I know some people, because Amazon is pretty ruthless in their cut that they're taking on these. Um, are, well, I guess uh, comparatively, it's not bad, but comparative to selling them on your own side, it's, it's a lot. So are you guys pricing them higher on Amazon and then pricing them lower on your own store? Are they the same or the how same. are you driving? Yeah. Okay. They're the same. You know, our attitude is this is like, listen, it's good. We make money on these books. We have a, a healthy profit, mar profit margin on these because of the nature of them. But at the end of the day, like these are also like really brand plays. Like we get this journal into people's homes. Like it gets them into our other products and our other services and, and listening to entrepreneurs on fire more, which, you know, drives up our sponsorship revenue, which just last month we did $82,000 in sponsors you know, sponsorship revenue. So like it, it, it like feeds all of the other parts of our business as well. Yeah. And, and that's a, such an important point. I think some people, a lot of people don't understand that long view of the book as the foot soldiers to bring back yeah. the audience and to bring back customers. And I, I want to talk about the, 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 the plan for the newest book and launch and stuff in just a second, but anything else that you've seen work well from driving ongoing customers? Obviously Amazon works well. Are you running Amazon ads? Are you running ads over here to the Shopify store? Like anything else that that's kind of worked well or moved a lot of the journals long-term? We do use ACOS, which is the Amazon ads. Um, that's all that we use. We don't use any other ad advertising platform. You know, I do use my podcast, Entrepreneurs on Fire. So I, I have eight rotating calls to action at the end of every episode. And one of those eight promotes the Freedom Journal. One of those eight promotes the Podcast Journal. One of those eight promotes the Mastery Journal. One of those eight promotes our free podcast course. One of those eight pro promotes, you know, our book, The Common Path on Common Success. So we have like our different revenue streams. And I use the show to continue to drive traffic. Because when you go to our Shopify page... Like it has, you know, buy here on Shopify or right below it has the buy on Amazon too because you want to give people whatever option they're most comfortable with. Um, and, you know, frankly, by the way, a little insight, the reason why most people will use Amazon, and this might not be a surprise to some people, but it might be to others, um, over just like just as easily buying like on a place like Shopify is because they're so confident in how easy the return process is. That's what people love about Amazon, myself included. Yeah. Now, how do you take people from buying these journals to, to other parts of your business? Because like you said, I would imagine it's 
it's a kind of a Trojan horse for other pieces of your business. What does that kind of funnel look like? And then I guess maybe two part question, how do you drive repeat purchases or kind of cross sell between journals? Yeah, that's kind of one of the beautiful things about the journals is like, after you've accomplished your number one goal in a hundred days, like that journal is full, it's done. It's not like a book, which you can like put on the shelf and then read again or give to a friend. It's like the journals like done, like it, it keep it because it could be a good legacy piece for you, but it's done. So like we have people that are literally have done, we have one person that's done 16 consecutive freedom journals. That's 1600 days. I mean, that's insane. Um, and, and that's just the thing. It just keeps doing it. And, you know, when you want to gift it to somebody, you've got to gift them a brand new one. And so the kind of the journals kind of feed themselves. And then, you know, within the journals, we are very strategic. Like, you know, I have essentially like, um, products and services that I'm recommending, you know, essentially on every single page of this, which is like teaching people, um, you know, different tools that we use systems, automations that we use, but also, is driving people to our products and services as well. So there's a lot of different things that are going on, but as you're going through the journal, like you're getting exposed to our content, our products, our services. So it is this kind of just like self-perpetuating machine. That's great. And, and you're, it's, it's a consumable. So people just like toothpaste or deodorant or whatever. I mean, people are continually coming back and buying that thing, but it's also you're in their hands and in their home every single day. And the power of that was something like a journal, even more so than a book that people read once, maybe twice. I think it's, it's just so powerful because then they're Oh, hold up. Maybe I'll listen to entrepreneurs on fire today. Cause I was just working in my freedom journal or just, I mean, I think it just, it's, it's foot soldiers um, f- for uh, the Entrepreneurs on Fire Army. So let's talk uh, common path to uncommon success launch. What are some of the things that you're doing, you know, based on what you learned from the journals and uh, from uh, obviously, I think as far as I know, there's no Kickstarter this time. That's been a big thing in the past. What, what are you doing differently? And, and what's kind of the overview of the launch plan? I mean, basically it's this. I decided to go the traditional book publishing route because I was curious, like, how's this going to look differently? Like, I know what I did with my other, you know, self-published books and my self-published journals. What is HarperCollins going to bring to the table? And frankly, you know, it's been pros and cons. Like, they've brought a really cool marketing team who we work with and they have some good ideas, some bad ideas, you know, and they've definitely brought a marketing budget. So, you know, we have, you know, like spent, Harper Collins marketing budget, you know, to bring on like a book launch manager, you know, somebody who um, I think you actually might have met uh, Amber Del Hauer. She's done a lot of book launches for like Michael McCallowitz and other authors like that. Um, and that's been really cool because, you know, kind of managing that kind of book launch side of things. And it's just been like a really interesting and fun experience working with a traditional book publisher like a Harper Collins just to see how they operate and to see you know, what they do and giving you, you know, some insights on that very thing. So, you know, frankly, it's been a really cool experience. And as far as marketing goes, one thing that I, I kind of lucked out on is Harper Collins is really going to expect me to be doing like a media, um, like a city by city kind of book tour, which I'd be curious because you have so much more experience than me. I have zero experience. Um, But they were, you know, we're going to, they wanted me to go do like a city by city, like, you know, book tour of like all the Barnes and Nobles and the BAMs and this and that. And I just frankly knew that like, that was not going to be the best use of my time in any way, shape or form. And, you know, with the world that we live in, that's not possible. So that was scratched. And now I'm doing what I do best, which is I am on every single podcast you can imagine. Like I'm making my rounds, I'm calling in my favors. I'm doing all the things like I'm here in my studio. I'm going to be on nine different podcasts today. After you, I'm on Amy Porterfield's podcast, which is a huge show. It's like I'm able to be on podcasts that have tens of hundreds of thousands of listeners instead of being in a Barnes and Noble with nine people that somehow made it. <laughs> but again, I don't yeah. know. I mean, like, what have you experienced with those kind of city book tours? You know, it's, it's, I think the best bang for your buck is to do three or five stops and not to sell books, but for the publicity around that, and then make them super exclusive and invite a bunch of high rollers and then segue PR off of the back of that. 
Lewis House has done this pretty well. Mm-hmm. I know you you know as well. And so you're 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 really just inviting an audience full of people who can share that book. And and so it's it, you're you're doing it for the ripple effect of it, not for the actual you know. 50 book sales or whatever in the room. And then if you couple that with PR where you're on all the local TV and radio stations when you do that. And so it's super strategic. You're coming in, you've got a a big, you know, kind of like a high roller guest list. And then are all the conversations that come out of this, that that might be the thing that gets on their podcast or the thing that just gets the final yeses and promotion and social echo from that. But Beyond that, it's, I mean, I think the days of doing a 20, 30 city book tour are, they're not over because people will do, still do them, <laughs> but that doesn't mean that they work. And so, so podcasts, <laughs> one of the big things you're doing, any other, if you were to say top two or three other things that you're doing, yeah, you're doing some bulk, something that's book sales. brand new, um, that is working really well is clubhouse. Like I'm spending time on clubhouse and I'm, going to different rooms and, you know, I'm going, getting, you know, spending time and going up on stage, answering questions, adding value. And of course my bio has a very clear call to action to what I have going on for my book. And, you know, I'm going to be doing one this Sunday where, you know, we're just kind of focused on that. And I've done ones that are just, you know, specifically, you know, rooms that I've created too, to just talk about different parts of that. So Clubhouse has been a really interesting um, opportunity that, you know, I am, really very much enjoying for a lot of reasons. I love the audio only aspect of it. Um, you know, you got to be careful. It has the potential to be a huge waste of time, like almost anything else in this world. Sure. Yeah, um, sure. But that is something that I can tell you with certainty is working. How do you know? Is, is it a trackable link or something in your clubhouse? It is trackable now? because what happens is I have amazing bonuses. And this is something that we can talk about later that's really helped my book launch. But like literally every single person that orders the common path to uncommon success, I'm shipping a mastery journal, a freedom journal, and a podcast journal to their door, Chandler, to their door. That's one of the five insane bonuses that I have for just pre-ordering one copy of this book. And so what happens is they go to my URL, uncommonsuccessbook.com. They go ahead and they click on the you know, um, pre-order now it tells them to enter their email address in. So we're collecting their email address. Then it gives them the link to go ahead and choose whichever place they want to buy, which like 95% of people are buying from Amazon. And then they get an email that says, you know, thank you for supporting the book launch. Here's four steps. Click reply, you know, attach your receipts, tell us how you found out about this book. And then there's a four step, you know, of, I forget what it is right now. Um, and, Every single day, I'm going into that inbox multiple times per day and reading where people are finding out about this book. And Clubhouse is coming up, Clubhouse, Clubhouse. I'll do this one podcast that I thought might be kind of small. And boom, I'm getting all these people you know, hearing about me on the show. I'm going on another podcast that I thought was really big and crickets. Um, And I'm able to really gather some very fascinating information. So I'm actually going to be going back right now to a couple of the podcasts that were like very grateful for for me to be on the show um, that potentially don't even know like how much power they have in their podcast. And I'm going to be like, let's do another show because it's worth it. And then there'll be other shows where like, you might be surprised where if they asked me to come back on for a second time, I'd be like, "Mm, no. Um, I appreciate it, but once is enough. So this has been some really valuable information and it's, it's a great way to track what's working. Yeah. That's super smart. Why, why do that? Um, it, it, the, 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 all the bonuses, like from a business perspective, what, what's the psych, or what's the psychology yeah. or so strategy the, behind that? From the business perspective, it's not a play to make money. This book is personally not a play to make money. Like that's not why I did this book. If it was, then I'd have to be much more strategic about it. And losing money on every pre-order, which is what I do, I lose money every time I ship all three of these to your door. Cause what am I making? Like a dollar a book? I mean, that's it. But like I'm losing money on every single pre-order. So it's not a financial business play at all. I'm doing it because I have to make it a no-brainer for people to pre-order now because people will have the best of intentions and they'll they'll say, oh yeah, like I will absolutely order the book when it comes out and then life takes over and it never happens. So 
you have to give people a reason to act now. And this is for everything in life. This is just marketing 101. Like you have to give people a reason, a no brainer reason to take action now. That is the key. And that's what having five insane bonuses like that and locking in pre-orders do. So now on day one, when March 23rd hits, boom, all those book orders drop and boom, you know, my book rises to number one right away because of that. That's super smart. I like the way you're doing that. And obviously it's an investment and you're losing money per pre-order, but it's a yeah. long-term play where people are now using the journal and then reordering. And, and so the yeah. long tail of it's that- It's a long-term play. And Chandler, honestly, it's it's like a legacy play. And yeah. I, you know, for me, like I've made my money. Like I'm here, you know, I've been making multiple millions of dollars for years. I'm in Puerto Rico. I don't pay taxes except for the 4% flat tax. So like my, you know, net worth in my, you know, war chest is large. This is what I want to give back to the people because it's, it's my audience that has elevated me to where I'm at right now from listening to the podcast, from buying my products and my services. They're the reason, you know, why I have eight figures of net worth. Like this is honestly me giving them the best gift that I know is this is the 17 step roadmap for you to achieve what I've achieved which is financial freedom and fulfillment. And financial freedom doesn't mean, by the way, eight figures of net worth or, mo- or millions of dollars a year. It means that you have enough money, you're making enough money, that you're living a- a- enough below your means, that you are free financially to make decisions as you want to make them. And you're fulfilled because you're doing what you want to do. That's great. What's that y- URL again? UncommonSuccessBook.com uncommonsuccessbook.com. Guys, grab a a copy of the book and get the bonuses. Um, I mean, it's a no brainer for the bonuses and you can see how he does it. That's just one of the bonuses. There's four other insane bonuses I won't even get into now. You can see it at that URL. But if you go to uh, uncommonsuccessbook.com, you'll also see um, Gary Vaynerchuk's personal endorsements. Seth Godin personally endorsed this. Neil Patel, Eric and Mandy, Dory Clark, there's a, the first chapter of the books there, a video from me about the book, um, all five bonuses listed out there, like uncommonsuccessbook.com. And just like Chandler said, by the way, like steal from the masters. Like this is a flipping well done landing page and you'll see yeah, why yeah. we go there and <laughs> learn from it and implement things that you think will work for you. Yeah, 100%. That's a great idea. So, hey, final couple of things. So we got the bonuses. I think you're doing bulk purchases as well. How's that worked? Any lessons learned or takeaway or takeaways for folks there? Yeah, we have over 7,000 bulk sales right now. So it's definitely working. Um, fantastic. And I basically, listen, I went out to my audience. I went out to my list. I went out to the Chandler Bolts of the world. And I said, listen, if I brought you value over the years, this is how you can have some reciprocity. This is how you can pay me back. Um, and here's a link, eofire.com slash bulk, which again, anybody can go check out right now. And again, steal my, steal my secrets. Like you can see exactly what I'm doing right now. You can see how I'm setting up these bulk orders, like, you know, what we're delivering on them, the whole nine yards, um, eofire.com slash bulk. And that's what we're doing. We're offering some amazing things, you know, in return for bulk orders so that we can really just go all out on this. And it's been a really fun experience to see, you know, who stepped up who hasn't stepped up. I'm taking notes for sure. And uh, listen, the reality is this. I spent the time in Chandler. You got one of these videos. I created 300 personal videos, personal, where I spent the time and said, Chandler Bolt, this is John Lee Dumas. This is not a boilerplate interview uh, uh, video. This is a personal video from me to you. And I, I sent out 300 four-minute videos to 300 people. And that had massive results. Because when people saw that they were personal videos, they actually listened to the whole video. And then they actually took action on the below steps I, I requested them to take. So that was a huge, huge like revelation to me is like, you got to put in the work. You got to do things that don't scale. I could have sent out a blast email and got a fraction of the results, but I took the time, did personal emails and got results. Yeah, when you're getting... 
30, 50, 100, several hundred copies sold at a time versus what kind of the one to one, it's the one to many. Any, how, how, you know, any tips or things you learned from how did you structure the tiers and any surprising tidbits of like which tiers move the most books from a bulk sales perspective? Yeah, you know, I think that the uh, the thing that really moved the most books um, was the fact that I I created some bonus levels within these bulk orders that literally were no brainers, just like the pre orders. So, for instance, if somebody bought twelve books, um, you know, for like three hundred and fifty bucks or whatever the price point was, they got like four months free of Podcasters Paradise, which was 400 bucks. So if they were already in Podcasters Paradise, like they could get 12 bucks and then get the next four months of Paradise for free and have 12, bu- have 12 bucks. Like it was like making it that kind of no brainer. So again, I wasn't doing this to make money because again, that doesn't make sense making money. Like I'm, you know, taking $400 out of my pocket of future Paradise sales in return for 12 books, which what do I make on that $12? But I'm doing it because I want to crush launch week. I want to get sales. I want to get this book out there. I want to get it on the lists. You know, I want to, you know, have this book, you know, have the kind of reach and impact and success that I want it to have. And so I'm going all out on it. That's great. Any, just kind of in the home stretch here, any final tips on the book launch piece? or things you're doing differently with this one? I think I'll just kind of circle back to, to being willing to do things that don't scale. I mean, the amount of emails I'm sending one-on-one, the videos I sent one-on-one, the follow-up that I'm doing, you know, it's like a ton of work and it's not automated. It is one-on-one. It is doing the things that don't scale. And if you believe in your book and you want it to get out there, you've got to be willing to do just that. And the, the other thing that I'll share is the reciprocity that I built over the past decade of interviewing so many people and, and helping elevate their brands, like that's what you need to be focused on as an influencer as well, as an entrepreneur, as you know, a content creator is what are you doing right now to be building reciprocity with people that when the time comes, they're going to want to help you. Yeah, for sure. I'll never forget episode 888 on the EO Fire podcast, Chandler Bolt. <laughs> Check <in> my- it out. <laughs> So, uh, John, found two questions. Knowing what you know now, you've self-published a book, you've uh, self-published multiple journals, sold hundreds of thousands of copies of those. Now you're uh, right here at the at the finish line, aka the starting line, which is your the, the launch of uh, your first traditionally published book. What would be your advice to John from how many ever years ago, pre-book number one and all the other Johns out there that maybe they have a podcast or they're thinking about writing their first book. What's your advice on what you know now? Become the best solution to one real problem in this world and just laser focus on that. Because if you're the best solution to one problem, people will beat a path down your door and you will be the best solution to a real problem and you'll be able to just completely grow a business, a life around that. And the people that are, you know, a jack of all trades and a master of none, they don't win in this world. But if you are the best solution to one world problem, one real problem, you will win. Yeah, it's so great. People always give me a hard time. They're like, do you really want to be known as the book guy for, for, <laughs> forever? I'm like, Call me whatever you want as long as you call me. <laughs> <laughs> call and, me. <laughs> and uh, by being that one thing, I mean, I'm, we're, we are very much, and this is, this is a, yeah, I don't think I've ever mentioned this to you. One of my favorite things I've learned from you is the, is, is the focus, follow one mm. course until success and just staying focused on that one thing. John, this has been awesome, man. Uh, where can people go to find out more about you and most importantly to, to pre-order the book? Well, listen, listen to Entrepreneurs on Fire if you want to hear a great podcast. Uh, my website, eofire.com, has some great resources for entrepreneurs, a lot of free courses um, there. But the book is uncommonsuccessbook.com. It's the common path to uncommon success. It's a 17-step roadmap to financial freedom and fulfillment. So if you're ready to embark on a roadmap to financial freedom and fulfillment, the common path to uncommon success is for you. Don't wait. 
pre-order, get the insane bonuses that all disappear on March 23rd, UncommonSuccessBook.com. UncommonSuccessBook.com. Guys, gra um, grab the copy or grab a copy, get the bonuses, check out the funnel like we talked about. There's it's one of my favorite things to do is get, buy the book just to see how the funnel works and then see if there's <laughs> things you can implement um, with, uh, with your book as well. John, thank you so much, man. This was awesome. Booyah.